In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the love and mercy of God be with you. Let us pray. O God, who made your people partakers in your redemption, grant we pray that we may perpetually render thanks for the resurrection of the Lord, who lives and reigns with you forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Holy Ghost according to John chapter 16, verses 16 20. At that time, Jesus said to his disciples, A little while, and you will see me no more. Again, a little while, and you will see me. Some of his disciples said to one another, What is this that he says to us? A little while, and you will not see me. And again, a little while, and you will see me. And because I go to the Father, they said, what does he mean by a little while? We do not know what he means. Jesus knew that they wanted to ask him, so he said to them, Is this what you are asking yourselves, what I meant by saying a little while, and you will not see me again a little while, and you will see me? Truly, truly, I said to you, you will weep and lament, but the world will rejoice. You will be sorrowful, but your sorrow will turn into joy. The Gospel of the Lord. My dear good listener, a good Thursday of the sixth week of Easter to you. I have chosen the theme to guide us in our meditation. Why does Jesus leave us a little while? My dear good listener, from the Gospel text we have listened to, which has only four verses, the word a little while appears seven times, and we know seven is a perfect number. So I have been asking myself, why does Jesus use this word a little while? And indeed this word brings a lot of questions among his disciples, a little while, and you will see me no more. Again, a little while, and you will see me. Imagine your friend told you, A little while, and you will not see me anymore. And a little while, you will see me. Definitely, you do ask yourself, Where is that person going? But this word, a little while, does not picture at all that Jesus is going, for example, to hang himself, as some would think, because you wouldn't hang yourself and be seen anymore. You are completely lost. A little while here definitely means what Jesus was going to go through. A little while they were going to imprison him. He was going to be tortured. He was going to be killed. He was going to be buried. But a little while or just on the third day he would rise again. So the disciples were not see him after his death. Yet just three days they would again see him. So on Good Friday, they were not going to see him anymore. And on Sunday, they were going to see him again. And he will appear to them as Acts of the Apostles, chapter 1 says, for 40 days. And yet, this would also mean as we approach the Ascension Sunday, a little while they were going to see him for 40 days. Yet, he was going to ascend into heaven and they were not going to see him, but they were going to see him again in the person of the Holy Spirit on Pentecost Sunday. So again, a little while. So therefore, we ask ourselves, why does God at times leave us to ourselves a little while? Why does he seem to leave us to ourselves? Why does he seem to abandon us? I don't know what you are going through. But at times, we have such a feeling, God has abandoned me. God no longer listens to me. Maybe at times you are praying and you feel you are dry, as if your prayers are not being listened to anymore. Why does God permit this? Jesus tells his disciples, 
a little while and you will not see me, and again a little while and you will not see me. Truly, like, truly, truly, I like, said to you, you will weep and lament, and the world will rejoice. My dear good listener, Jesus somewhere, somehow, he wants us to participate in his cross. For he tells us, whoever wants to follow me, let him carry his cross daily. Sometimes he lets us carry this cross, and that's when he seems to leave us. But he wants us to participate in this suffering, but a joyful suffering. It's a paradox. It's a suffering that leads us somewhere. You will be sorrowful, but your sorrow will turn into joy. It's a sorrow that turns into joy. It's like a pregnant woman. When she has the bath, she's in labor pains. Definitely it's a lot of pain that she goes through. A little while she has that pain. But a little while later, when she has given birth to a child, he is, rather, she is joyful. So there is this sorrow that accompanies us in our life. And that's, for me, that sorrow that pictures this little while. A little while when Jesus leaves us to participate in his passion. Why does he leave us to go through this? He wants us to mature. He does not want us to remain children. In 1 Corinthians chapter 13, St. Paul tells us in verse 11, When I was a child, I used to talk like a child and see things as a child does and think like a child. But now that I've become an adult, I've finished with all childish ways. My dear good listener, Jesus does not want us to remain children, but he wants us to become adults. Although, of course, he tells us to still have that childlike simplicity. But in mind, he does not want us to remain children. That's why he called his disciples to be shepherds. You cannot be a shepherd when you are just a kid. And so he leaves us to go through fire so that our faith is tested. This is what he tells Peter, John, and the other disciples in Luke chapter 22 verse 40. Pray not be put to the test. Jesus wants us to pray that we are not put to the test. My dear good listener, Jesus told St. Faustina in her diary, number 379, My heart is sorrowful, because even chosen souls do not understand the greatness of my mercy. Their relationship with me is in certain ways imbued with mistrust. Oh, how much that wounds my heart. Remember my passion, and if you do not believe my words, at least believe my wounds. So, my dear good listener, I think this can tell us that Jesus has chosen us to understand his passion. The greatest prayer that consoles Jesus' heart is a prayer that has to do with remembering his passion, remembering his wounds, remembering the blood that he shed for us. This is the powerful prayer. Therefore, remember. When a little while, he seems not to be with you. He is actually with you. Remember the other disciples when they were in the boat. Jesus seemed to be asleep, yet he was with them. This is a time when Jesus wants you to mature, to grow in faith, to work it also yourself. But remembering, he has not left you alone. For he says in Matthew chapter 28, verse 20, I'm with you always. Yes, to the end of time. The Lord be with you. May the God of love and mercy bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. My dear good listener, I remind you that tomorrow Friday we are beginning the novena of Pentecost, preparing for the Holy Spirit. Please remember to say this novena. I'm sure if you went to Google and Google it up, you'll find it. Please let's say it. Oh